Hey everybody, we're going to work on IXL D1 Compare and Contrast today. Um, with Compare and Contrast, you're looking at a piece of writing and deciding which pieces go with like the different parts of what you're reading. So, for example, this one says use the text to compare and contrast RGB colors and CMYK colors. CMYK and RGB refer to two types of color systems. The RGB system includes all the colors you can make with combinations of red, green, and blue light. The CMYK system, on the other hand, consists of the colors that could be made by combining cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink. This means that RGB colors are used for computer monitors and television screens where CMYK colors are usually preferred in the publishing industry. RGB colors are called additive colors because when they're combined they produce white light. In contrast, CMYK colors are called subtractive colors. When they're mixed together they produce gray. So which ones are used in co uh, computer monitors? So I'm going to look back here, and it says this means that RGB colors are used for computer monitors. So I'm going to click RGB colors. Which ones are called additive colors? So what I usually do, like this one I looked for computer monitors. I'm going to look for the word additive or additive colors when I skim to see if I can find it. RGB colors are called additive colors. So this one's RGB again. When combined, produce gray. So I'm looking for gray, and I found it right at the end, and that's CMYK. Okay. So that's how you do it. Sometimes it'll have for compare and contrast where you can choose, like you could choose both if that makes sense. Let's see if we have any of those here. It says use the text to compare and contrast straw and hay. If you've never worked on a farm, you may think that straw and hay are the same thing. They do both come from plants, but there are actually a number of important distinctions. Straw is leftover plant material collected after a seed or grain harvest. As such, it is a great source of fiber. It is used in a number of ways, including as feed and bedding for livestock. Hay is used for similar purposes, but its high nutritional value makes it especially appealing as livestock feed. It is harvested before the plants produce seeds, which preserves many nutrients that straw lacks. Oh, I get it. So hay has straw, and hay and straw are the same, except for that hay has the seed in it still. Straw and hay alike are commonly tied together in large bundles called bales. So, comes from plants. I saw that it says they do, they both come from plants. Okay, so straw and hay both come from plants. Plant matter left over from a harvest. So, it says here straw is left over plant material collected after a seed or grain harvest, so that's just straw, does not have much nutritional value. As such, it is a great source of fiber. It is used in a number of ways, including as feed and bedding for livestock. Hay is used for similar purposes, but it's high nutritional value. So even though it doesn't say that straw does not have Nutritional value, I know I can't mark hay because hay has high nutritional value. So I'm gonna mark straw and hope that I'm right. I was. Use the text to compare and contrast green tea and black tea. Green tea is known for its bright green color and mild flavor. Black tea is dark brown with a stronger, deeper flavor. It surprises many people to discover that both of these teas are made from the leaves of the same plant. The leaves are simply processed in different ways. Green tea leaves are heated shortly after harvesting to preserve their fresh green color and flavor. 
Black tea leaves, on the other hand, are torn or rolled after harvesting and then exposed to oxygen before they are dried. This process changes the color and the flavor of the leaves. So, has mild flavor. Here it says mild flavor. So green tea is known for its bright green color and mild flavor. So that would be just green tea because it says black tea has a stronger, deeper flavor. Is made from the leaves of a plant. Saw that it says, discover that both of these trees, teas, sorry, not trees, are made from the leaves of the same plant. So both of these would be there is torn or rolled after harvesting. Here it says torn. So black tea leaves are torn or rolled after harvesting. So just black tea. There you go. When we think of the polar regions, we tend to think of glaciers and icebergs. Though they're both giant masses of ice and snow, they form in different ways. A glacier is a large body of ice on land. When a chunk of ice breaks off or calves from a glacier that's near the ocean, an iceberg is created. In contrast to glaciers, icebergs float in the ocean. Only about 10% of an iceberg is visible and the rest is submerged underwater. They may last for three to six years or they may break down more quickly if they float into warm water. On the other hand, some glacier ice has been around for tens of thousands of years. Icebergs are classified based on size and shape, whereas glaciers are classified based on where they formed. Interesting. So glaciers are on land and icebergs are pieces of glaciers that break off and float in the water. So let's see, are masses of snow and ice. It says though they're both masses of ice and snow. So I would click both. Which one floats in the ocean? So I think that's icebergs, but I'm going to check my text evidence from a glacier that's near the ocean. Icebergs float in the ocean. So yep, icebergs don't survive long. Well, in the grand scheme of things, three to six years or more quickly, and that's icebergs. So I would say that doesn't last as long as a glacier. Are classified according to shape and size. Um, yeah, because, oh, I'm looking back at don't survive long because some glacier ice has been around for tens of thousands of years. Yeah, so I can't mark glaciers there. Icebergs are classified based on size and shape, whereas glaciers are based on where they have formed. I feel pretty confident about this. Okay, so hopefully this has helped you um, figure out how you're supposed to answer these. It's good to look back in the text. It's good to read through the text first. You can read this part first if you think it'll help you. To me, it just distracts me because then I feel like I'm looking for just something specific, whereas I'd rather read it, look at each one and go back and find it. But you do what works for you best. Good luck.